yours, Asia. Okay. Uh, thank you, Lee. Thank you for introducing me. Uh, so, yeah, I'm a local Cleveland artist, um, and uh, I primarily work with acrylics. Um, I've been painting for, let's say, uh, probably about four to five years now, uh, I would say professionally, um, before I was painting on and off, and I mostly did illustrations and drawings. Um, but around 2018, uh, I decided to just primarily stick with uh, painting, uh, and then I ended up falling in love with acrylic paintings. Um, I guess I just like the versatility of it, and uh, I like all the uh, the colors, and uh, I, I feel like um, uh, acrylic paintings is really forgiving uh, <laughs> compared to uh, oils. Um, and uh, primarily, my art focuses on bl uh, black culture, fantasy. Uh, and I also uh, have a hint of uh, Egyptian mythology in some of my paintings. Um, but yeah, so that's that's me. And uh, like I Lee said today, I'm going to be showing you how I paint the eyes of my subjects. Uh, so really, the eyes kind of stand out for a lot of people who see my artwork. Uh, I have a lot of people that like to say. Yeah, my eyes kind of uh, evoke uh, certain emotional uh, signatures to them. So, uh, yeah, my eyes evoke a lot of emotion, and uh, they really speak to people. So um, what I like to start with first is I like to start with a underpainting. And um, usually it's like a little light wash that I start with. And what this does is it helps give your painting more depth and it helps with uh, shadows and uh, tonal values. So it also helps you establish like uh, different shadows and highlights and it, uh, it creates easier transitions between colors as well as you go on through the painting. So we've already got the underpainting down and now what we're gonna start doing is we're going to start outlining the shape of the eyes. And I kind of have my colors laid out here. So what I'm doing is, is I'm combining this burnt umber. I don't know if you can see that. Oh, yeah, quite, quite well. Okay, okay. And uh, I'm combining it with this Mars black. And that's going to... That's going to uh, uh, outline the shadows around the eyes. Let's see. So we're kind of we're going to do this freehand, by the way, too. I, I don't usually try to work from reference photos. Uh, I tried to get away from that. So let's see. Let's start with the eyebrows. It's going to be a slight arch. And we're going to go down like this. You want to make sure to keep your brush wet too at all times. Because um, you don't want it to get too dry and then you can't really move the paint around and, you know, you don't have a really nice outline so you don't want to paint too hard I don't want to do it really light okay and we're going to move on to the shape of the eyes We have a round. Round shape. We're going to come down. 
like so. We go back up. So right now, this is uh, looking like a really rough skeleton of the eyes, which is fine because you're, you know, you're in the beginning stages, so you don't want to stress yourself out with major details of doing the under and upper creases of the eye. The crease there. And then we're going to establish the bridge of the nose, the top bridge of the nose. So I'm going to kind of curve and like this. Okay, so there's the rough outline of the the eyes. Now, some people like to draw it out. Um, I used to draw out my outlines, but, uh, you know, basic pen or pencil. Um, but I, I prefer to do it with paint because it's much faster. <laughs> okay, so now... We're going to come in here and go into the inner of the eye. And start switching brushes. Okay. And, and establish the eyeball or the, the iris here. And this is the cornea, where the cornea would go. And the Iris again. And we're going to color in the eye, the iris here. And again, you want to make sure that this, the paint stays a little bit diluted and it's a thin layer. Because what you're going to be doing is, is you're going to be piling layer on top of layer, and that's what's going to give that really good, nice, realistic feel to the eyes. Okay, now we're going to go in and we're going to start establishing shadows and lights around the eyes. So usually the corner over here is dark, the space between the eye and the bridge of the nose. And you come up here under, right under the eyebrow where it gets dark. And as you move further out, it gets a little bit lighter. And do the same over here.
and under the under eye right here is a little dark too. There's going to be shadow there. Okay. And it's also a good thing to know where your lights and darks are going to be at. And that's usually based on wherever your light source is at. So if your light source is coming from, let's say, the right, you know, one side of the face is going to be obviously lighter than the other. And there's going to be less shadows on one side of the face compared to the other side. So always knowing where your light source is going to be at, too, is another way to bring realism to the eyes and the shape of the eyes and make them look more realistic. Let's say there's a little bit of shadow here and there's going to be a highlight more up here. I'm just lightly coloring the sand. And let's say there's going to be a shadow within the eye. Make it a little bit darker. And kind of gives you a nice shadow overcast. And it's setting your picture up for what you, the effect you want to create within the eyes and the shadows. So it's already setting it up. I'm going to make this a little bit darker over here. Okay. So now we have the outline of the eyes. So now what we're going to do is I like to work from the inside out. So what I basically do is I start with in the inside of the eye and work my way out towards the other parts of the eyes. So what I'm going to do now See, we're going to start with the whites of the eyes. So a lot of people like to think that the whites of the eyes are just pure white, right? And uh, unfortunately, they're not just pure white. Uh, otherwise, they come out looking cartoonish. So there's, all, there's actually all different kinds of colors in the eyes. You know, it, it just depends on where the shadow and the light the lighting is within within the eye. So there, you know, there can be red, green, blue, you know, you name it. Um, but usually what a lot of artists do that I've seen is that they will take uh, like uh, this brilliant blue here and this titanium white and burnt umber. Just a little dab of the burnt umber, not too much. We'll mix it together. 
And what it does is it creates this nice realistic effect within the eyeball and the whites of the eyes. It gives you like a sky blue coloring. That will change as we layer paint on top of paint. And you also want to do this with a nice thin brush too, not a really big one to get that finer detail in there. Okay, you don't want to run into the shadow, not yet at least. The shadow right here, you want to leave that alone for a minute. There's the white of that eye. Now we're going to move on to the other one. And do the same thing with this one. You don't want to run into that shadow that's right beneath the eyelid there. You just want to leave it alone for a minute and just work on the whites of the eyes. Oop, got a little bit on there. Okay. All right, so right now, the whites of the eyes are sky blue, but you know, that will change as you add on or layer on more paint. All right, now we're going to, um, we're gonna put a little bit more burnt umber in that sky blue mixture. And this time, I'm going to go over it, this new mixture, I'm going to go right between where the blue, the sky blue and the uh, shadow intersect. I'm going to go right underneath it, kind of go around a little bit around the eye, just a little bit. The same thing on this side, curve down. On both sides. And now you're gonna go back over it. Are there any eye colors that are trickier than others to actually paint? Um, for some reason, I have an issue with blue. <laughs> uh, blue is, uh, for some reason, a difficult color for me to paint um, so far that I've tried. Um, I don't know if it's just me, but yeah, that, that tends to be a, a difficult color to paint with. Um, but I've painted like, uh, I painted all colors. I've used red, 
I use green, uh, even golden. Uh, so I, I've tried many, but blue kind of gives me the, uh, kind of gives me a hard time. Okay. So you should start seeing a little bit of a shadow creeping in. And go back over it. You just want to, you're just pulling the paint down really into the sky blue coloring. That's all you're doing. Is a nice effect. All right. Now you're going to move to this side and do the same thing. So you're going to take that new mixture and apply it to where the sky blue and the shadow connect and then you're going to pull it down into the eyeball pulling it down Okay. I'm going to take a dry brush. I'm going to blend it a little bit. Creates that nice shadow in the eye a little bit. I'm going to reestablish this again. I'm sort of fading. Okay. All right. So now you're going to take. Now you're going to take the burnt ombre again and you're going to mix it with the Mars black that you have if you're painting from home. <laughs> and then you're going to apply it right here under the shadow. I don't know. Is my hand in the way? Can you guys see what I'm doing? See it pretty, pretty well, yeah. That's fine. Okay. Okay. Just making sure. Okay. I'm going to put it right here in the bottom part of this shadow. And again, you're going to pull it down a little bit. Let me establish that. Pull it down just a little bit. Not too much. Just a little. You're going to take your dry brush and just start to blend a little bit. You're going to do the same thing with this eye. You're going to go right at the bottom of this shadow. Just make sure we dry it up. Now we reestablish this. Okay. I'm going to go right there. Okay, you're going to take your dry brush, 
and pull it down. Now you kind of have a shadow that's forming underneath the eyelid, okay? Next, we're gonna work on the corneas. And what I'm doing is I'm mixing the burnt sienna with the light pink and probably adding a drop of the titanium white. We're also probably gonna add a little dab of the burnt uh, umber as well. So it looks really natural. I'm going to come over here, establish the cornea. Right on either side of the eye. Okay, and then there's usually a part right underneath the underside of the eye that's either red or pink, um, depends on where the light is hitting it. So for this painting, we're just going to stick with the mixture we made, minus the burnt umber. Get it as light as possible. And come back in and kind of go in this space right here. Try to establish it. Establish this red part here that's on the underside of the eye. All right, so we have that down. All right, now we're going to go back. to the whites of the eyes. And this time we're just gonna take our titanium white and 
put a few little brushes there on either side of the eyeball. It only be a few. And do the same thing with this eye. Okay. I'm going to go back and take that dry brush again. Sort of blend it in with the blue and the brown. I need a little bit more. This okay. Taking the sky blue again, reapplying it. It got dry. So we're going to try this again. And use the edge of the brush to kind of put the white on. And you're going to dry your brush again and blend it, keep blending it. And you're just building layer upon layer of paint. And we take this brown brush again, reestablish the shadows. And that they fall right in place. And there you have it. I'm going to go in with the white again. I'm blend it in with that shadow. Thank you. 
Okay. There we have the whites of the eyes and the cornea coming into focus. Now I'm going to move on to doing the irises. So you want to establish the pupils first. You're going to use a Mars Black to do so. Now you have your pupils in there. Let me just start again. Now, for the eye color, let's see, we're going to use cadmium yellow, we're going to use a little bit of the burnt sienna again, and then we're going to use this unbleached titanium color. So for the irises, usually I start with the darkest color of the iris, and then I work my way to light. So we're going to add the cadmium yellow and with the burnt sienna I want more of the burnt sienna more so than the cadmium yellow though make it dark and you're going to come in and you're going to start right at the top right here where it kind of meets the shadow of the under eye, and you're going to be moving your brush from the tip of the pupil to the outer edge of the eye. And you're just going to kind of work your way around the eye. And that's going to be your darkest color. I'm going to do the same thing with this side. And you can start either way. You can start either from the pupil to the outer edge or the outer edge to the pupil. Um, it doesn't really make a difference. Just works, uh, just find what works for you. Uh, 
Okay. So after that, we're going to take more of the cadmium yellow and add it to that initial mixture. And what you want to do is you want to start a slow progression to start getting lighter and lighter. So each color, each layer you put down should be lighter than the next. So we don't want to start up here because this is where the shadow is at at the top the eyes. So we're going to come down here and start inserting that lighter shade. We don't have to put it on every strand or over top of the darker color. You can skip like every other strand. That's fine. Do the same thing with this eye. Okay. And you should start to see that lighter shade taking over. And then from that one, we're going to get lighter again. And come down kind of the lower part of the eye and just kind of flip it this time. Okay. Now to kind of go into the shadow of the upper part of the eye, you're going to take your very first mixture, which was the cadmium yellow and burnt sienna, and now you're going to mix it with the burnt umber a little bit. And you're going to apply it right where the shadow meets the iris a little bit. And then you can also do it in between your strands. Then you're going to take the cadmium yellow and a dab of the burnt sienna again. And really, you, you can go back and forth between the colors, too. The, the name of the game for me is 
the more layers you use, I feel like the more interesting the eyes become. You're gonna go in, reestablish that color again. Okay. You want to make sure you're doing it on the bottom half of the eye. Let's see. Now you're going to start mixing the cadmium yellow with that um, unbleached titanium. Now you're going to start working with the lighter colors. And let's say the white is here. I'm just going to flick it again every other strand or so. And you're flicking it over here. As well. You want to keep getting lighter and lighter. You're going to start establishing where the light kind of hits the eyes. And let's say maybe here. And at the tips. Outer ring of the eye. I'm going to go back in with this burnt umber color again. And really, you're just trying to darken the, that area of the um, where the eye kind of intersects with the under eye. Um, you want to use the burnt umber with the Mars black again. And creating a nice, nice shadow. And you want to flick it. You don't want to do it too, too hard. And you're going to come in and kind of flick it as well within the eye as well.
I'm going to do the same thing to this side. We come right in the creases between the light and the dark. I'm just going to look at a little. Okay. Now you're going to go back inside the iris again. And you're going to mix the cadmium yellow and the unbleached titanium with regular titanium white paint. Get an even lighter shade. The ones before. And you're just going to kind of put them at the bottom here and flick it, flicking it. Okay. And then we're going to come in again. This time we're going to add a little bit more white. And we're going to bring the white down here a little bit. I'm going to go a little bit into the shadow, but not too much. Okay. I'm going to add a little bit of the cadmium yellow back. Just a little bit. Okay. Now we're going to move on to the pupils and shadows of the pupils. Um, so I'm going to take a titanium white and then we're going to take the Mars black. We're going to kind of add a nice gray shadow here. Oh, I'm dry up a little bit. And then we're going to come back in 
with a titanium wipe. And we're going to add the white highlight here. Now you can kind of see the eyes start to come alive and look a little bit more realistic. Okay. I'm going to come back into the whites of the eyes again. And establish this highlight. Okay. And take your dry brush again and then blend that white in a little bit. All right, so now we're going to start with the under eyes. So we're going to go back to the under eyes and the cornea. And we're going to establish a little bit of shadows there. And some lighting. And we establish this line again. And go back in, put this lighter color down. And just run a line across it. And do the same thing with this side. And we establish this line. We're also putting down this lighter color. We're mixing burnt sienna with the uh, light pink to get this effect. And putting the highlights on the corneas and on the under part of the eye.
So you have pretty much the eyeball there. Now we're going to work our way out. So we established the dark, so now we have to do the lights for the face. And I need more paint. And I'm mixing the burnt umber with the burnt sienna. To give us a Nice skin tone, mixing it. And we'll work our way from light to dark, or dark to light. So this is the mid-tone I'm putting down. We're just mapping it out, mapping out where those mid-tones would go. They don't need to look perfect. And it's okay if it kind of overlaps dark areas that we mapped out earlier. That's completely fine. So the more layers we add, the better it will look. Okay. We're going to go back to that burnt umber and Mars black again. Go back to that mixture. Reestablish these dark areas. We can start kind of letting the dark color fade into the mid-tone a little bit.
Okay. And then you're going to take that same brush using the same uh, burnt sienna and Mars black on there. And you're just going to mix it with that mid tone. And then you're just going to come in and start mixing it. Let it overlap mid tones. Okay. So now we're getting our midtones and darks blend in just slightly, but not too much. We want to leave a little bit of space open. That's where we're going to put our lighter tones at. Okay, I'm going to reestablish this area one more time. In between eyes and the nose. And kind of going into the eyelid a little bit. Make a nice color transition. Now, We'll move on to sort of the bridge of the nose. Establish that. So I'm mixing the Burnt Umber with the Black Mars again. And come in. And you want to have more bon uh, Burnt Umber this time than the, the Mars Black. 
and give a kind of a distinction here. And lighting and shadow really plays well into establishing um, other facial features like the nose, uh, the bridge of the nose, the shape of it, even the shape of the nostrils. Then we're going to come back in that medium tone again that we had before. And bringing this closer and closer. Okay, and now I'm just going to reestablish bridge here again. And let that color kind of go into the medium tone. So it blends. Okay. I'll reestablish this tool. Now we're going to take the burnt sienna and the light pink. And this is going to be our sort of lighter tone. We're going to start using. And we're going to take a dab of burnt umber. I'm going to mix that. Find it. The lighter actions on the face would be. You're just going to kind of fill in the gaps here. Okay. I'm going to put the highlight on the nose as well, or the start of it, so that we find it.
And we're going to come back in and just take that lighter pink color. This time add a dab, just a single dab of the burnt sienna. Not too much. Add one pink the highlight would go on the nose. And then the other highlights that would appear over the eyes. You can start to see the face coming together. Okay, and then we're going to, let's see, I'm going to go back to that mid-tone again and just keep building it up. Just keep building and building upon it. And this time we're going to add in the light pink again. This mixture. And this time you're going to take a blender brush. So blend it in. That's the face. And you're going to take, uh, you're going to do the same thing with the other side. And take your blender brush. And come through to the eyes too. Right around the nose. Okay. 
And you're just going to keep building and building. So you get it to where you want colors to go. And take a dry brush and kind of smooth out some of the rough edges so that they blend in. A little bit more better. Then you're going to take burnt sienna again and we'll reestablish midtown You can sort of see the eyes coming, the shape of the eyes coming in focus here. I'm still working with the blender brush. You're going to take the light pink again. And lightly go over the crease of the eye. underneath the eye. Lightly. Even along the bridge of the nose a little bit. And take a dry brush again. And sort of blend the colors together. Then I'm going to come down to where the maybe the top of the cheek would be on this side, the left side. Still using that blender brush. And come in and sort of lighten it up a little bit. And a little bit up here too. I'm still keeping with the shadows. And you're still mixing the burnt sienna and the burnt umber, mm -hmm. the light pink. Mm 
Let me try not to add a little bit of a blush here. Lightly add it in. And you pretend as if you were painting the actual cheek, but you're just painting a little bit of it. Come under the eye again. And now you see face forming. All right. So you're going to do the same thing to this side. Going to take that burnt umber again. And burnt sienna. This midtown up here over again. Come down here to where the cheek would be at. I'm going to take that light pink color again. You're going to insert it where the highlights would be at. And that way it starts to get lighter and lighter each time you go over it. Are we going over our time or do we still have enough time? Uh, that's a very good question. I would say um, I would say another 10 or 15 minutes at least. Okay. I mean, this will be up on YouTube eventually. If you have to leave uh, and you want to watch the end of it, uh, sooner or later it will be on YouTube. Okay. All right, we're getting to the end here. All right, let me reestablish this again, this dark area. This blending brush, kind of flick it along the creases of the eyes and reestablish the crease, the upper crease here. In the lower crease. Okay. And then 
let's see. And we'll go back over with the light to light pink again. Don't want to use too much, just enough. I'm just going to blend. Blend it in. Okay. And then we're going to Start putting the highlights over the nose a little bit. Bridge of the nose. We come in with this burnt sienna and light pink coloring. Then let's see. I'm gonna do the burnt sienna again with the burnt umber. I'm gonna go over. Oh, I see the thing. Make sure that blends in a little bit better. Go over the eyelids a little bit. And a little bit more about Sienna. A whole lot. Keep in mind with the creases of the eye. Come in with the light pink again.
into messy eyes. Okay. So we're going back to the nose. And put, insert the highlight here. Where it would go. Make this color a little bit lighter with this blender brush. And you're just kind of gonna dab it a little bit. And that's where your highlight would be. We're going to go work our way back, backwards, and do that mid-tone again and reestablish that. We're going to go back to our darker color. One that we originally started with. Back to the lighter color. And just blending it in. And make these lines a lot softer. And make these transitions more smoother. That would be the perch of your nose. Now we're going to go back over, establish the eyebrows. So you're going to use Mars Black. And you're going to take a really thin brush like this. And you're just flicking it. You can actually add Mars Black with the burnt umber too, give it more depth. And you're just really flicking the brush. And depending on if you're using a reference photo, you want to follow the direction of the hairs over the eyebrows. Now let's say we're going downward and Or slightly up, a little bit, slightly up. And 
I'm going to do the same thing with this eyebrow. You're just really just flicking the brush. It gives the appeal that there's hair here, and it's not just a flat line. And you want to curve up a little bit too. Okay, now we're going to establish the eyelashes. So again, you're going to take that thin brush and you want to mix it with the burnt umber again. And again, this is just all adding depth and dimension to the eye. I like to paint a baseline where I'm basically going to put my eyelashes at. And you just curve and flick up. Curve and you flick up. And eyelashes are not always going in the same direction. Sometimes, a lot of times actually, they can crisscross intersect and just look uh, like natural eyelashes. So this way they can curve to the, the right, and this way they might be curving to the left. Again, it's just if you're working from a reference photo, it's all you have to make sure that you're looking to see what direction the eyelashes are actually going in and not just guessing if you don't really know. Then I'm going to do the under eyelashes. Here. I'm going to very lightly apply your brush. where the red of the eye is, right here under the eye. Okay. I'm gonna make that rid of the eye really pop. Make it a little bit lighter. I'm going back in with the burnt sienna and the light pink again. I'm 
even adding a little bit of white to it. And adding it every so often. Okay. And we're going to come to the other eye and kind of do the same thing. Okay, and uh, Asia, when you do finish yes. the other eye, that might be a good time to uh, wrap it up. Right. Uh, okay. I will. Uh, we have a couple observations and a couple questions for you, so. Okay, okay. I'm turning it. The and establish the eyelashes on this eye. So you can pull down and curve in this eye. And then we can crisscross. Go upward. No. Uh -oh. Okay. And we're going to do the under eyelashes here. Ever so lightly. Okay, and uh, there you have it. Okay, wonderful. One, wonderful. Uh, we have a question from Teresa. Uh, I wonder what okay. you're using. I wonder what you're using for the reference. Oh, I, I'm not. I'm, I'm actually just going off uh, my own uh, intuition. So I was just uh, freehanding the really? whole time. Do you do that mm -hmm. often, uh, as opposed? Yes. To yeah, okay. yeah, I mentioned that at the beginning that I, I, I've worked up to the point where I'm trying not to use reference photos anymore and make my art more organically. Wow. Uh, so just coming from my own imagination. Wow. That, that's mm -hmm. really, uh, I, I've often wondered whether or not there was uh, people that still do that. Uh, the Anderson ladies say thank you. Uh, those eyes are amazing. Be blessed at all. Um, thank you. Uh, Marianne Moynihan says, thank you, Asia. I learned a ton from your excellent tutorial. Uh, Carolyn Swaffield says, I really enjoyed this evening. Thank you for so much. Excellent guidance. Uh, Sue Hurley says, good night, all. Enjoyed watching Asia's demo. Eyes are quite dramatic. Thank you. Uh, Joan thank says, you. Uh, do you do full portraits? Your colors are wonderful. Thank you. Yeah, um, actually, I do. Yeah, I have a couple of full portraits um, that are available. Uh, you know, so right now, um, if you uh, go to my Instagram or my website, uh, you'll be able to see them. Mm -hmm. And uh, 
my own observation is uh, just how it came together when you started doing the details in the cornea and the pupils. And then mm -hmm. the shading, uh, the shading actually reminds me, I didn't know you could do that with acrylic, that amount of shading and still keep the detail. Uh, it's almost airbrushed, uh, the quality to it. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Um, I think um, because uh, recently I, I've i been using this blender brush that I've been using mm -hmm. um, that I showed earlier. So that's kind of made things a lot easier, like th this brush right here. Uh, it, it's made things a lot easier to blend uh, as opposed to like a, a straight edge okay. where you're like fighting with it the whole time to blend in the colors. But, you know, this, this blender brush really saves time, and it, it really makes the colors transition well into each other. Mm -hmm. um, so that's, uh, that's what I would say uh, about that. But, um, yeah, I wasn't always great at blending. <laughs> uh, okay. uh, no, I was, I was, uh, I, I mean, I wasn't horrible, but there wasn't a smooth, a smoother transition, uh, I would say, back in, like, middle school. Hmm. Uh, that's probably where it was. Yeah. Cause I remember doing my first painting and, uh, it was, uh, in, a uh, one of my art classes. And even though the, the drawing and stuff of it was great, the, the blending just wasn't there. Um, so I kind of gave up on painting for a minute and just stuck to illustrations, but, um, I don't know. I, I guess, uh, after watching, uh, I meant to say at the beginning too, watching YouTube videos really has helped me with blending and shading Okay. and learning different techniques and how to, you know, make your portraits look more realistic. That has really helped me in the last few years with getting better at that. So I would definitely recommend that to any like beginner, or even intermediate artists out there. Uh, you know, if you want to watch others do it, that I highly would suggest that. Okay, and uh, Pam Montano says thanks. Beautifully done. Uh, Thank if, you. if you could, uh, uh, sometime in the future, take a couple of high resolution pictures and send them to me. And uh, okay. I am remiss in not showing you this before all the audience. Um, basically, uh, if you want to know who was doing now, why is this? This is our demonstrator. This is Asia. So I didn't have a chance to get that up on the screen before. Okay. Mm -hmm. Lee? Yes. Can you, this is Deborah Johnson. I'm uh, Paris Massey thing. I would yes. just like to thank her. I think this is really amazing. Oh. Um, I, I'm thank tired you. and I, I uh, started trying to uh, do art. I, I do go to Tri-C and take uh, senior classes and things like that. But I can see why my um, art is not realistic. The way you layer and layer and layer the paint. Um, I, uh, during the pandemic, that's when I started trying to uh, do art because once I, uh, I, I, I went to try to see to get in class, I took two classes and the teacher told me, don't stop going on uh, YouTube. And I did learn a lot of things from YouTube. But oh, yeah. I yeah. took a portrait, um, I took a portrait class at Tri C. And um it's I, you know, I look at this realistic things and I'm like, how do they do it? How do they do it? Well, your professor doesn't have time to, to go into this and explain because I have to be a hands-on person. And um you have really helped me. I have a portrait that I did in class and I, I'm like, I set it aside and I'm like I'm getting ready to try to work on it now <laughs> I want to thank you God bless you um yeah and are, are you on YouTube or or um yeah I'm trying to I think I'm going to start making more videos on YouTube uh so this is really giving me the confidence to maybe go on YouTube and start doing more tutorial videos Mm -hmm. And I hope to have this up uh, sometime within the next week or two on YouTube, this particular demonstration okay. here. So. Okay. I, I, want I, to, I really enjoyed this. I, I really enjoyed this. Yes, indeed. Thank you. I think we all did. Yeah. <laughs> hey, Thank you. Uh, 
<laughs> I just wanted to thank Asia for coming out. This is Rosinia Cunningham. Hi. How are you Hi. doing? Good. <laughs> so good to I'm, hear from you. Yes, I'm glad you came. Mm -hmm. Your work is spectacular. Thank and um, yeah, and what a great uh, demonstration with the eyes, because I know those eyes are challenging to paint based on my own experience mm -hmm. to make them that realistic. Yes. So you did yes. a great job. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Is there, there any is, more questions? Uh, actually, when you first uh, had just the uh, underpainted canvas, I almost thought it was mm -hmm. a wooden panel. And uh, <laughs> just looking at it now, just the eyes and the bridge of the nose it, it, with, with the background, it's a very surreal picture, even not being mm -hmm. finished. It, um, something about it just draws you in there. It's like, just. Yeah, yeah, I'm surprised myself too. Because, <laughs> uh, you know, sometimes I don't know where I'm going to end up at, but, uh, you know, I. Uh, we made it work out, so. Oh, indeed. Yeah. Mm hmm mm hmm Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, could I ask, Lee, could you put another picture of her up? She looks awfully young. Oh, uh, sure. Uh, take, no, take I'm 30. Second. Oh, um, <laughs> okay. oh <okay. laughs> I am. I am 30. Yeah, I have a very uh, youthful face, but I believe me, I am 30. Oh, you're very, you're young. You have a, such a great future future up ahead of you oh, I, am, I will be uh 69 march 9th so uh, uh you hear what i'm saying <laughs> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You, you you you're great keep keep it up thank you yeah. thank you so it sounds like you have a birthday coming thank up you. happy birthday to you <laughs> Everybody, oh goodness, that? is that going on YouTube? Well, <laughs> no, probably not. But <laughs> what? Happy birthday! <laughs> Thank you. Thank yeah, yeah. Somebody yes. bring out the cake now. Now it's time to bring out the cake. Yeah. Right, right. I hate that we didn't see your face um, on the camera, Asia. I that would have been nice. Next time. Yeah. Next time. Well, we'll we'll work it out next time when I figure all this uh, camera stuff out because uh, I was trying right. to figure out how to do two cameras, but uh, maybe I'll go on YouTube and try to figure that out. We'll see. Well, uh, <laughs> actually, you want to look up something called OBX Studio, and the only problem uh -huh. is you would need two cameras, and you uh, it's the learning curve on setting it up is kind of steep. Uh, I know it can be done, but I just know enough to be dangerous. So. Oh, oh, okay. Oh, all right. <laughs> all right. Well, um, hey, good night, everyone. Good night. All right. Good night. Thanks for coming and uh, great, great job. So thank you. All right. Thank, thank you guys job. for reaching out to me and uh, mm -hmm. thank you for having me. And uh, I'd like to thank uh, Rosina for, uh, you know, uh, making this opportunity uh, a reality. So, oh, indeed. Thank yes. You. Yes, indeed. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Right. Have a Thank good you. evening, everyone. Okay, uh, Rosina. Thank you. Will you be at Thank you, Rosina. Uh, Rosina, will you be at the meeting tomorrow? Yes. Okay. I uh, will be present. Bring the power brick and actually uh, bring the laptop if you would too. Uh, uh, we'll oh, okay, I sure will. Do a little experiment in there. Okay. Okay. Sounds good. wonderful. Super. So I uh, night. Good, Good night. night. Good night. Oh, thank you so much. Yes, indeed. All right. It was nice meeting you all. Mm hmm All right. Thank you, Lee. Oh, thank you. Mm hmm All right. I'll catch you guys at the uh, next event and probably come up in person and uh, Super. see uh, yeah. what's going on. Mm hmm Yes. And you can always, you're welcome to become a member, too. Oh, indeed. Okay. Okay. Uh, yeah. How much is the um? How much is the membership again? Is it twenty five dollars? Uh, right. I believe it's mm -hmm. twenty five dollars, and we do have uh, family memberships. If you want to get the mm -hmm. whole family in, uh, we've got student memberships, and of course, come as a guest every now and then if you want to. So, yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, okay. 
Mem one of the things about memberships, it's got its perks. You get a free web page. Uh, you get to participate oh. in our shows. And um, so always, oh, looking, always looking for new members. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. I'll keep that in mind. Thank you, Super. guys. Oh, thank you. Okay. All right. Well, you guys have a good night. Oh, you too. You too. Bye bye. 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 And there we go.